So when we look at earthquakes themselves, that's all very well, but the earthquake has already happened. What we'd really like to know is where earthquakes are going to take place in the future, um, where those earthquakes are going to be, how big they're going to be, how often they might take place um, for a given location. We don't think we're ever going to be able to predict where earthquakes are going to be precisely. We're not going to say tomorrow afternoon there's going to be a magnitude six and a half earthquake. But I'd like to know, for example, if I was living in Istanbul, what's the probability that I'm going to experience strong shaking in the next 20 years or so? Now we can use conventional methods such as seismology to do this and what we do there is we look at the earthquakes that have happened in the past and we use those to work out and make an estimate of the number of earthquakes that might happen in the future. Now that works very well where earthquakes are very regular and where we've got good instrumental or historical records of earthquakes. But in some parts of the world, for example, in parts of Mongolia or in parts of continental interiors where faults are slipping very slowly, there might not have been an earthquake on, on that fault for thousands of years. Um, and so it's actually very hard when there's been very rare earthquakes on an individual fault. It's very hard to work out the probability of future earthquakes taking place. And so if we only use a short historical or seismic catalogue to work to base our seismic hazard estimates on, they can be biased and they cannot give us the true picture of where the future seismic hazard will be. The way the radar can help us is that the ground is continually warping because of the gradual motion of tectonic plates. And if we can measure that warping, we can see where the earthquakes will be because it's that warping it's like stretching an elastic band. You're gradually putting energy into the earth and eventually the elastic band snaps and that energy is released in an earthquake. If we can measure that stretching, that gradual strain that's building up within the earth, we can say something about where future earthquakes will take place. Now, it's actually extremely challenging to do this. We need to be able to measure rates of motion that are as small as one or two millimetres per year over distances of something like 100 kilometres. And so it's a very challenging data processing approach. But using modern radar interferometry methods, whereby we combine lots and lots of images in large stacks, we can extract this um, small long-term deformation trend and then use that to say something in the long term about future seismic hazard.